Our, our temperature is way too high, which means it should it could be going anaerobic once we get up to these high temperatures, because as microbes are reproducing, they can actually consume the oxygen faster than it can infiltrate. And so once we get up to these high temperatures, it's, it's a fear that it could be going anaerobic. But we took our thermometer out, we put it to our nose. It smells good. Good smells are a good sign. So I'm actually not worried about this pile going anaerobic. Now I'm worried about it being way too hot. And so we want to turn this thing to get allow some oxygen back into the center of it, but also to like open it up, let some of that heat out of it, and hopefully it doesn't heat back up to that excessive temperature again. So how do we check our temperature? What we're looking, only part of this pile is up to 170 degrees, right? This is not 170 degrees. This is actually cool to the touch, right? Everything that's on the bottom of the pile is also not gonna be that hot because the ground is stealing that temperature. So we need to check for the hot center. That's the part that's hot. So sticking the thermometer down in there, waiting for it to stop moving. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly back it off. So once it gets to 170, we know it was at 170 because the, the thermometer was in there. So that's our stopping point. I'm going to back it out until I watch the temperature drop. So right there, the thermometer is actually starting to head down. So what that means is you pinch it right there. So, uh, sorry, that far into our pile is how far the outside of the, exter the exterior of the compost pile is, right? Everything below that distance is our hot center. So when we turn our pile, we were going to turn it into three parts. We're going to actually divide the compost pile into three parts, our outside, our hot center, and our bottom. We can assume that the bottom as well is going to be about that same thickness. You can't, it's really hard to check without a very long thermometer to go all the way down in there. And it's a little bit excessive. So we're going to leave about that exact same amount on the bottom as well. So that'll be our bottom, the outside, and then we'll hot center. And so what we're going to do is scrape away that much across the outside of the entire pile. There's a lot of grace. Absolutely. There's a lot of grace in this. So I'll just, let me just show you what I mean when I said like right here, I'm going to start scraping in. And I'm going to make this thing look like basically like a bullseye. It's going to be like a moat around the entire thing. And I want to scrape away ish about as much as that, that, that length was on the thermometer. A little difficult. And you can actually feel it now. This is hot. Whereas before I touched the outside, it was not hot. Oh yeah, to be fair, Karen, as I was going, I did give it a touch. Okay. And I was like, ooh, that feels hot. Now it's a little bit cooler because I've just pulled the top off, but. So, like I said, we're just gonna start grabbing this. And as we bring it over, I wanna fluff it. Oh, right? Wait, 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 water. Aha. Uh -huh. Do you want to talk to them about carousel as well as I'm getting this? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get all you guys to help me actually turn this. Um, but I just wanted to take a couple of these out of here. Also, water right now, Ryan. right? Like we're talking about, you can Ryan. see, we can see, right? We're losing moisture right now. That heat is actually steaming off all that excess moisture. And so we're going to need to add moisture to this pile while we're turning it. It's also the only time you're going to have access to every single part of the pile to actually give it some moisture. So as I'm scooping it out, and making my new base, Keisha is going to add moisture. It's not a ton of moisture. We already know this is, well, you want to check some moisture. Let's pull some of that off so it can cool off so they can feel it. <laughs> it's hot. Save yourselves. <laughs> so checking moisture. Wow, it's super hot. <laughs> Is that bucket empty? Um, so when you're checking moisture, yeah, you want to get about a palm of about a, a your size palm, right? You don't want it. You don't want too much because you really want to be able to give this thing a squeeze. So we're going to put it in the palm of our hand like that and we're going to squeeze. So we actually <laughs> so hot. No, this is good. We actually got a couple of drops of water came out of there. If I squeeze it again. It seems a little bit excessive on moisture, right? With that much water dripping out of my fingers. One reason for that is going to be, did you see where I grabbed the sample from? Yeah. Where all the steam is going. So this stack, this tower right here is always going to seem like there's more moisture in it than there actually is because it's steaming out of the middle and steaming up to the top. So this material usually is a little bit wetter. 
So if we come down to like the side, not e it's not even that hot anymore because it's had the chance to breathe. Let's see. Oh, I still got a lot right there. <laughs> and it is too, like if you think, we were just talking about this, in tropical climates, we have to use a lot more water because for some reason, the materials don't tend to suck up the moisture the way they do in the desert. I'm assuming it's because of the plants, they grow in a lot of water, they need to shed water so they don't pull too much in. They're often waxy in content. In California, our materials like our oak chips, like basically anything we grow there, they suck up moisture a lot differently. So in California, we're looking for a little bit less moisture than we are here. Now we learned about this from Karen's place. Um, actually working there, we just could not get enough moisture in and it was really weird that it would just it would just run off. It was like it wouldn't stay inside the material. It was almost as if it was always sopping wet. Now once it starts to break down more, it really does pull in the organic material. So the moisture content when we're building the hot part of the pile is going to be vastly different than when it's broken down. As this starts to look like compost, you're going to follow the more traditional guideline of squeezing it until you see one drop come off the hand or a well up of water in between the fingers, right? And so in the beginning, I say it is almost impossible to overwater a compost pile in these first few days. Um, often your anaerobic smells in a pile like this is going to come from texture and overloading it with high nitrogen, right? Like a lot of food waste, not enough chunky chips, and a lot of water will create an anaerobic environment. But as you can smell here, we have this carbon heavy, super moist, super hot compost pile, and it does not smell bad. So this is another thing that changes with every pile you make, with every different location you're at, um, every time the materials change. And so we came to this like over a long period of time. It took us a long time to say, hey, you know what? Actually, when a lot of water comes off our hand on build day in those first few turns, Especially we're maintaining built. temperature better and our microbial content is more robust. Um, Another good thing to check too is whatever material you are checking, see if it sticks together. It's already sticking together. It's already sticking together. So that's a good sign too. Oh, I was just saying, like, I, g I gave it a squeeze. Yeah. I'm getting moisture coming through, swelling up on my fingers, a couple drops if I shake it. But also, see, it's sticking together. So that's good. That's a good sign that it's, yeah, it's got, yeah. I had, oh, yeah, this is, you can see it's starting to break down, right? It's turning brown. It's getting some of those humic acids are starting. But, yeah, it's still, it's still young, right? This is his second turn. So I'm, we're all going to turn this pile. Like I said, we're going to dig down to about, this height right that's ish about the size of that what we're going to do though is we're going to do something called the carousel so everybody can join in without stabbing anybody else with the pitchfork <laughs> see how we're walking in one direction right now i'm going to grab a scoop fluff it out i'm going to keep walking this way Everything that was on the outside that we originally scraped off and we're going to pile that directly into the center here So we can start doing that you see kind of the, the ring guys. Yeah. We're just going to grab all the stuff on the exterior And that's going to be our new center and then what we'll do after that gets piled in the middle is we're going to take the bottom and we're going to lay it over the top and just insulate that new core How do you Stick the thermometer in there. 
Right now, that temperature should be way down. Even if it drops, it's probably gonna drop below 131. It can be down to like 110, 100 degrees sometimes. That's okay. It doesn't mean that you like, oh my God, now my clock started over because it dropped below. It's just part of the process of turning. It happens. So we'll put the thermometer in there and you're gonna probably, we're gonna check this by the time we're done with this and just see what it's actually come back up to. Right now it is at 105 degrees. So it went from 170 to 105. So we'll watch it and see where it ends up.